we're gonna introduce probably the most popular web attack, cross-site scripting or XSS. In this video, we're gonna talk about the basics, different types and categories of cross-site scripting. We're also gonna demonstrate the actual attack manually and automatically using Python scripts. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, Name is Dean Armada, and I'm the internet. Action Star! And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. Cross-site scripting or XSS occurs when attacker executes custom scripts on a target web server, or it can be sometimes on victim's web browser without server involvement. The idea is attacker will inject a code into HTML pages, and this is viewed by the users. Then the victim browser will then execute that malicious script, which might steal cookie information, link sensitive information, such as password or credit card, and it can also change page content or redirect victim to a malicious site. JavaScript is the most common and the most effective code used, but it can also be HTML, uh, VBScript, or any language that the web browser can execute. Cross-site scripting is one of the most, if not the most common bug or web vulnerability reported to a bug bounty program. And hacker wants reported over 4 million US dollars bounties in 2020 alone. Cross-site scripting is always listed in OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities. And we have three types. First, stored XSS. This is when malicious code injected is stored on a server. And when retrieved, we get unexpected web behavior. The code makes its way into the database than the victim's web browser. We also have reflected and document object model. Both doesn't store the malicious code into the server database. We're gonna talk about more reflected and DOM-based XSS in another video. For now, we're gonna focus on the basic and more common XSS. Next, we have blind XSS. It's a stored XSS, but often you don't see the result on a page. The code is executed on a different part of the application or executed on another application. This is used to attack internal applications or administrators, or it can also be used for exfiltration. Lastly, self XSS. This is when we trick the victim to execute XSS payload. So it requires social engineering and it's not usually accepted as a vulnerability by bug bounty programs. Our topology is very simple. We have two nodes, the attacker and the target web server. The attacker will send attack payload to the web server, and obviously we'll be using cross-site scripting attack. We will do it first manually, and the second example is automated using Python script. I'm here at Stick Show blog site and we're gonna test cross-site scripting. So I will register first. I'm gonna click sign up and I will use Haction Star as my username. I'm gonna add a password. I'm gonna click register. Okay, and then I will log in. Username is Haction Star and the password. Next. Uh, I will click the stick show icon and this will take me to the blog page. And as you can see, it's still empty. Next is I will add a valid post for testing purposes. So the message will be, this is just a test and uh, adding a valid blog message. If I click submit, as you can see, the post is successful. And the message is shown here, okay? Action star is the username, 
and the message is this is just a test adding a valid log message next is i will inject a javascript okay this is the very basic of xss because what we're gonna do is we will send a code not just words nor a message and this will be executed by the web browser so i will start adding the code by creating the opening tag i will just copy and paste to create the closing tag and i will use um a syntax called alert and inside we will add a message the internet action star okay and i'm gonna click submit and it is accepted and as you can see we are now getting the pop-up alert and uh, every time we go to this blog page we will get that alert let's do that let's go to the main page and then i will click this icon to take us to the blog page and as you can see we got the pop-up alert again with the message internet action star and this is caused by the script we injected so that's how we do xss basic manually this time we will do the cross-site scripting attack automatically using python script in the script we will also automate the registration and user login. So as you can see here, my username would be Spoonman with a password of Spoon X dollar sign S. And uh, take note, uh, in a real world hacking environment, we want to do the hacking with less time, less effort, and we can target multiple sites. That's why I recommend you to learn Python scripting. So in this example, we only have one target, but I can create multiple IP addresses and I can create loop so we can inject the script to multiple sites. And as you can see, uh, this allows us to automate the registration and login using these functions. And down here, uh, I specified the actual JavaScript, um, which is the actual XSS attack payload. Now let's start. So I'm going to exit and I will just use Python 3 command and specify the name of our Python script. Okay, hit run. And as you can see, our Python script is successful. We also got the message down here. You just completed an XSS attack. Now, let's go to the blog page and see what happens. So this is our main page. If I click the stick show icon, our XSS attack is successful. We got the JavaScript pop-up alert with the message XSS attack. I can steal the session authentication of your users. What we talked about, the basics of cross-site scripting, is just the introduction. We're not done yet. On the next videos, we're gonna talk about how to prevent cross-site scripting manually and using web application firewall. We're also gonna talk about more advanced cross-site scripting.